finally getting around to trying auto induction for the first time and so it's basically a way to get bacteria to make a protein on demand without you having to wait and wait and wait and monitor and monitor and monitor and tell it exactly when. So instead of like, it's kind of more like you schedule the on demand ahead of time so you don't have to keep watching it. It's really cool the way it works. It uses the same system that you use for like IPTG based induction. Those use this like lac operon. Basically, these bacteria, they can, they can eat lactose, but they really prefer glucose. And so if there's glucose around, even if there's lactose around, they're gonna eat the glucose. And if they run out of glucose though, then they would switch to lactose. And, but they can only switch to lactose if there's actually lactose around. So there's this whole regulatory system in the bacteria where if there isn't glucose and there is lactose, that's the only time in which they make those genes that allow them to break down and eat that lactose. And so if there is not lactose around, then they're not gonna do it. And so the typical like IPTG based method, IPTG, it mimics a metabolite, like a version of lactose. Basically how this operon works is that there's this lac repressor protein and this lac repressor sits where RNA polymerase needs to go. And RNA polymerase needs to go there to make RNA from the gene to make protein from the mRNA. And if there's a lac repressor sitting there, it's not gonna bind. But allolactose is going to bind to that repressor and cause it to fall off. And allolactose, it's basically a version of lactose. And so if there's a lot of lactose around, some of it gets converted to allolactose. Then voila, we've got allolactose. It binds to the repressor, the repressor falls off, and voila, we get our transcription and then translation. So we can add IPTG to get this, the lactose making genes to be, to go. But instead of just making the lactose making genes go, we can kind of stick that regulatory, that regulatory like portion in front of a gene of interest, say a protein we want made, or the T7 polymerase that'll go and transcribe the RNA for a protein that we want made. And so you can do this. You can put that regulatory information in front of something you wanna make on demand, monitor the bacteria, let them grow up to a nice level where there's lots of bacteria, but they're not dying out, and then say, okay, bacteria, make me lots of protein. And you don't wanna do it too soon because then you won't have enough bacteria, and when you tell them to make the protein, then they're gonna stop like growing and dividing and all that stuff and just make oodles and oodles and noodles of your protein. And so you want there to be oodles and noodles of bacteria to make oodles and noodles of your protein, but you don't want there to be so many oodles of bacteria that they're dead. So you have to like monitor the OD600, so basically how turbid it is. That's gonna be a measure of kind of like how much bacteria are in there because the more bacteria there are in there, the less like that can get through, the more like that gets scattered and stuff, and so the higher the OD600. So you have to wait and monitor and monitor and take samples over time and use the little vet and measure the OD and then add IPTG when you're ready and hope you don't overshoot it and all that stuff. Or you can use auto induction. So auto induction media, basically it has glucose and it has lactose. So here we're using lactose itself and we're not using that like mimic. Instead we have lactose. And so you might say, okay, well, why don't these bacteria just make the protein if you're giving them lactose? Well, because you also give them glucose. And so if you're giving them glucose, well, now they're gonna prefer the glucose. So they use the glucose first and then they run out of the glucose. And so then they're like, okay, I'll switch to the lactose because there's lactose around. So they're not actually gonna make the lactose stuff unless there isn't glucose. Because I forgot, didn't tell you about a second regulatory portion. There's a second regulatory portion where basically if there's low levels of glucose, then it's going to um, create this, um, there's going to be this molecule cyclic AMP produced. And cyclic AMP, it's going to bind to this like cap, this like cat, catabolite repressor, a catabolite associated protein, something like that. I don't know, but that's gonna help recruit RNA polymerase. And so it's gonna help bring RNA polymerase to the place to be, to copy the RNA. If there's a lac repressor sitting there, even if it's brought there, it can't actually go and make the RNA. So, but if there's lactose and there is glucose, then the RNA polymerase isn't gonna be brought there, even if the plaque is clean, clear ahead for it. So you have this dual system, and basically the way that the auto induction works is you have the media with just the right amounts of glucose and lactose so that the bacteria will grow to that density that you would normally induce them at. But instead of having to add IPDG, well, at this point, there's lactose present, and so they just switch. And you don't have to monitor anything. You don't have to worry about overshooting. You don't have to, like, 
tweak the levels and stuff. And so I'm really excited to try it out. I've always wanted to try it out. I'm trying a sort of simplified version. The original um, protocol from like Studio et al in like 2005, basically they use this complicated mixture. It's like a defined mixture. So basically it's chemically defined in that it's, you know, how much of this salt and this, um, this sugar and this and this and this, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's really hard because then you have to make all these ingredients and mix them together and these high concentrations and they don't dissolve very well i know i've tried that before and i never actually got around to doing the auto induction part but i made the media and it took forever so i'm trying this new method um where basically you just add glucose lactose and glycerol to your normal like um media like tv type media and voila these cells should grow should start making protein uh, we took a sample beforehand so that we'll know we can do run a gel and see okay well we know this protein should be run about here on a gel do i see a band about there in this pre in in this pre-induction i mean like pre-starting culture and then when we harvest it we'll take another sample and then we'll run an sds page gel we'll break open the cells and we'll look at the proteins and see if there's a nice big fat band we're actually hoping to see two bands put on two different gels we're trying to do different proteins so we're looking at maladehydrogenase um from bacillus offensis which is the one we're really j jazzed about and bacillus subtilis and so we're going to compare these buggers um and their proteins and then look at how they're kind of function and how they're adapted for the bacteria and how they respond in different situations all sorts of really cool stuff and so really really hoping it works so i don't have to go back to the iptg method or work on troubleshooting this or try that like higher that 50 50 i don't know yeah but i see oh one other thing so it's like 50 52 media or whatever that's like the the sugar solution in that studio paper and i was like what the heck is this number but basically i think that it can correspond to that it's like five percent um glucose and then five per uh point oh five percent lactose and then two percent glycerol or something like that whatever those numbers may come out to be um, that's where those numbers come from. At least I think so, or at least it makes sense in my head. Um, it's back to that whole like percent weight volume and all that good jazz. Okay.